Hey, Tim Schetz here with C4D Training. Today I have a little tutorial on some animation techniques for your motion graphics projects. So let's go ahead and start off. I'm going to go ahead and create a, a cube. And I'm just going to move my cube back a little bit. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a cog wheel. And we'll just go ahead and put that into an extrude nerve so we have our little gear there. And I'm going to move this guy a little bit forward. Let's say we want this cogwheel here to rotate as this box back here moves. We could keyframe that and you know be kind of a little tedious but let's go ahead and I'll show you something a little bit different. So our cube, I'm going to say as I move it in Z space here that I want the cogwheel to spin. So I'm going to select my cube and let's spread this out here a little bit so we have a little more room. So it's my Z that I'm going to be moving it in. I can click the X, Y, and Z, or I can click the P and select all positions. I just want to work with the Z position right now, so I'm going to click on it, make sure that it just it is highlighted, I'm going to right click on it and go to animation, and then I'm going to come down here to set driver, and then I'm going to bring this up here a little bit so we can see everything, and then I'm going to click on my extrude nerves, and I want my cogwheel to rotate this way. So I'm going to select on this rotation and I'm going to go ahead and spread this out here a little bit further so we can see. I'm going to right click on that, I'm going to go to animation and I'm going to select set driven. And so now as I take my box and I move it along the Z axis, my cogwheel spins. And you can see here on my extrude nerve there was this little tag added and that's an espresso tag. So if I double click on that you can see here it, it builds the espresso for you. The Z position of the cube is going into the range mapper and what a range mapper does is it says okay I want to take this value and I want to translate it to this value. And the value that we want to translate it to is the rotation for the extrude nerve or our gear. So if I select on my range mapper here I can move this out of the way and we can so the input range right now is 0 to 100 and our output range is to degrees so we can we can change that we can say 0 to 1000 or we could change it to something else but degree works because we're trying to rotate it so right now we have our box moving and it's kind of say it's moving a little fast that that rotations that is a little bit fast for me so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is open up this and we can edit this so basically right now the cube is coming the position of the cube is coming in and it's outputting it to uh, degrees to rotate the gear so if I right click and say new node espresso general and I come down to result I can get this little result box here and these are just nodes and so I can drag from this little output node here to the input on the result and when they connect you get that little green line and then it turns red when they connect and then I get my result so if I move my box it'll put a result in the result box so it's saying that what is being output here is 35.64 and as I move it it changes so I can change that by going to my range mapper and right now it's saying input lower is 0 input upper is 100 and then output lower is 0 to 360 so we could change this and we could say 500 and now if I move my box it moves a little bit slower and I could change that again make it a thousand and now as I move my box it's going to move even slower pretty cool huh so don't be afraid of espresso especially the set driver set driven really easy to use you don't have to adjust it at all if you don't want to but 
you know, if you open it up, just click on the range mapper and that's going to show you how things are mapped. And just remember, input lower, input upper. So that's the value of the Z position for the box. And then output lower to output upper is the degrees for the gear. We could change this again, you know, to 180. And now as we move our box, it's going to move even slower. So you can do one of two things. You can either change the upper limit here or the upper limit here to make it go slower. So let's show you another example here of how to use this. I have this piston here, and as I move this piston up and down, the arm rotates back and forth. So let me show you how to go about doing the piston project. So let's go ahead and create our piston. So we'll come up here to cylinder and just make them a little bit taller. And I'm going to create a cube. Just to give you the idea how this works. So I'm just going to make this rotate back and forth as this goes up and down. So we're going to go ahead and select our cylinder and as I move this guy up and down we want this to rotate back and forth so I'm going to go ahead and select my my cylinder and my coordinates and as I move this I can see that's my Y position so let's see let's let's start this at 200 and I'm going to go ahead and select just the Y, see just the Y selected, right click, say animation, and say set driver. And then on this guy, I'm going to rotate him this way. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up so you can see. I'm going to select just that, right click on it, go to animation, and say set driven. And when I did that, it added this Espresso tag here. So now, as I take my cylinder and I move it up and down, that rotates kind of kind of crazy. So we want to control that a little bit. So in order to do that, we just double click on this Espresso tag here, and we bring up our Espresso window. And again, here's our cylinder with its Y position going to the range mapper and then out to the rotation of that cube. So if we select on our range mapper and we come over here to the attributes window, we can see that we have input lower 0 to input upper 100. So I want this to start at 200 and go to 0. And from there, I want it to go from negative 30 to 30. So now as I move my cylinder up and down I can get it to rotate only a small amount. And if I move it further it'll continue to rotate around. It's really just saying that I want to map from 0 to 200 to 30 to 30. So negative 30 to 30. So a 60 degree window is mapped to 0 to 200. If I only moved my cylinder 100 meters, this would move 30 degrees because from negative 30 to 30 is 60. So half of this would move it half the distance, which would be a total of 30 degrees. I could make this negative 60 to 60, and that will basically double the distance it moves. So now it's it's moving much further, much faster. So depending on the, the range of motion you want, you can change your range mapper information. So now let's say that I just want to have this move up and down and have this rotate, and I want to animate that. So I'm going to go ahead and set my cylinder to 200 meters to start. And I'm going to come down. I'm going to go ahead and keyframe that. So let's go ahead and keyframe. So Control 
click on the little dot next to the Y. And then I'm going to come down, let's say, 10 frames. And I'm going to set that to 0. And I'm going to go ahead and keyframe that. So control click again. And so now, as I scrub my timeline, that moves. And I can see that I left my range mapper going from 60 to 60. So I'm just going to change that back because I don't want it to go too crazy. So I'm going to go 30, negative 30 to positive 30. There we go. And so now as I scrub this, it just moves a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to come down another 10 frames to 20 and select my cylinder. And I'm going to put this back to 200 and keyframe it again. So control click. And so now as I scrub this, it goes down and up. Okay. Well, I could go through and I could keyframe this all the way through, but that's a little bit tedious. So let me show you a quick trick on how to make that a little bit easier on yourself. So if we go ahead and we come up here to this little icon and I select my animation setting. Okay, so here we are in the animation setting. We've had we have this graph down here now for our animation. I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, window down here a little bit bigger so you can see everything. So here we have our three keyframes. And if we go ahead and we select those three keyframes and we come up here to key and we go to cycle, it brings up this little window and it asks us how many copies we want to make. So I'm going to go ahead and say four and hit OK. And now as I scrub through my timeline, you can see up there in the little window that my animation just keeps going. And so you could calculate how many times you need it to be in your animation and add that many cycles. So if I bring this back down here and we rewind and we play, there you go, perpetual motion machine. So you can see it kind of glitches at the end and that's because we go up and then we go down and then there's no up so then it jumps back to the beginning. So we could actually reduce this from 90 to 80 keyframes and now if we play this it should just keep looping and there we go so simple way to animate using set driver set driven and then in the animation window here using the key cycle hope you guys have found this helpful stay tuned for more tutorials i'm tim schetz with c4d training thanks for watching